Hey guys, it's Thermal Grease Monkey here, and I'm back again with another video. If you guys watched last week's video, you guys will know that I ended up testing an i7 5820K and an i7 6800K in 2025. Uh, as a couple of you were quick to know, uh, I did make a mistake. They're not 12 and 10 years old, they are 11 and 9 years old, respectively. So thank you for correcting me on that. But I also did see some suggestions about overclocking the CPUs, which I personally was really interested in. I know a lot of the older microarchitectures were a lot better and had a lot of headroom for overclocking to add additional performance. So last time I bought an X99 board, which is this board right here. And this CPU right here is an i7-5930K. And the reason I didn't test this one is because this one actually came with the board when I bought it. It said it would just be the board, but I think I got a little extra CPU included with it. So in this episode, I wanted to see if first my 5930K even works altogether. If not, this is getting cut from the video. But secondly, I wanted to see, hey, if I overclock this a little bit, this board's not very robust for that. But if I do a little bit of overclocking, is there gonna be a difference? If I take the same components, take my 16 gigs of RAM and my GTX 1660, can I squeeze a little bit more performance out of it? And can I also get a little bit better RAM speeds as well? Because last time we were stuck at 2133 megahertz and at least 2400 or 2666 megahertz would be significantly better. So in this video, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time trying to overclock the system and I'm gonna retest the same games with my GTX 1660 and see if things change notably. So I'm gonna real quick do a little bit of movie magic and I'll be right back. And I'm back. So I was only able to test three games because for whatever reason, I couldn't get GTA 5 to launch. It said I had audio driver issues and as many reinstalls that I did for everything and file integrity checks, I could not get it to launch at all. So we're only gonna be playing Black Ops 6, Forza Horizon 5, and CS2. So we'll kick it off with Black Ops 6. Black Ops 6 was the one that we saw the most notable improvement across the board. We were able to get a 500 megahertz boost to our clock speeds. So instead of boosting up to 3.7 gigahertz, we were boosting up to 4.2. And our RAM speed, we're able to boost it from 2133 megahertz to 2400 megahertz. So I'll show the clocks, the stock and the overclock between the two systems. Starting with Black Ops 6, at extreme settings, we were able to see a pretty significant jump, a 10 FPS jump from 49 to 59 FPS on average. And our 1% lows saw a nice jump as well. On Ultra, we went from 53 FPS averages to 65 and our low went from 49 to 51. At balance is really where we start seeing a lot of these bigger jumps, from 76 average to 90. At basic, we went from 82 FPS to averaging 99 with our overclocks, and at minimum, we were at 85 FPS with our stock settings, and with the overclock, we were averaging about 102. And obviously, our 1% lows either stayed about the same or went up a couple of FPS respectively as well. So overall, a really good experience and a nice notable jump. Definitely the clock speed bump helps and the memory speed is gonna help a lot. The next game we tested was CS2. And at, with CS2 at very high settings, we were having a very similar experience. We added one FPS to our averages and our 1% lows. Uh, at high, we were averaging 147 with our overclock comp compared to our 142 with our stock graphic settings. and. We had a bump of two FPS with our 1% lows. At medium and low, though, is where we start to see some bigger jumps. At medium, we're averaging about 189 FPS. We go from that to 204 with our overclock. And at low, our stock speeds, we're at 224 FPS. And with the overclock, we're at 245. So if you're running low to medium settings, you can get a notable jump. You can be getting anywhere from 15 to 25 FPS extra if you're deciding to do a little bit of overclocking. The third game we did was Forza Horizon 5. And Forza, it wasn't a very notable change. I don't think the clock speeds were really the thing that were making the big difference. To me, it seemed more like the RAM was making kind of the hard carry. And overall, it was a fairly similar experience. I'll throw the metrics up. 
it was changing about six to seven FPS. At the extreme and ultra settings, we were gaining anywhere from three to six FPS. At medium and high, very similar, three to four FPS extra. And at low and very low, five to six FPS extra. So across the board, it was a very similar experience. You're getting a few extra FPS and it was nothing super noticeable, especially in a game like Forza. Once I just kind of sat back and was doing a little bit of gaming myself with the overclock, I really didn't notice a big difference. So overall, would this be something that I do? For me personally, I probably wouldn't. The gain in performance is definitely there and it was nice to see in stuff like Black Ops 6 and CS2 to really see that notable difference. In stuff like Forza, I don't think it would really make a big difference or be relevant. But in stuff like CS2 and Black Ops 6, if you are trying to play competitive games, having the extra FPS can make a difference. But I will note, this CPU is a decade old. And although I'm using a remanufactured motherboard, if you're using a motherboard that is from that era, an Asus, a Gigabyte, MSI, ASRock, Super Microno board, any of those boards from that era that are X99 boards, they're also probably about a decade old. So their age is starting to show and as far as physically i don't know how how much longer they're going to be able to hold up so take that risk with a grain of salt additionally if you are getting one of these manufactured boards these remanufactured ones from say machinist get one of the better ones if you plan on overclocking the budget one that i showed the vrms were on fire and although it was okay for testing long term wise i would not deploy it long term wise it was very hot and i suspect that if i did continue to run this for an extended period of time i would likely damage the board and possibly even the cpu i would recommend getting one of the nicer micro atx boards that have either you know a more robust passive cooling or active cooling for it or even one of the atx boards the atx boards have significantly better vrms and cooling and personally, that is more where I would say to, to look for if you plan on overclocking this hardware. Uh, but I do think this hardware is still really relevant. I think it's a great choice if you're on a budget. It can definitely still play a bunch of modern games. And I think it's still a great choice in 2025. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, feel free to dislike. Totally understand. If you guys are enjoying my content, I'd appreciate if you guys could hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon so you guys are getting notifications from my videos that are going up. And again, if you guys can leave comments, I super appreciate it. The last video I just did, this video is from the last video with the i7-5820K and 6800K. I was given advice to try overclocking the CPUs a little bit to see what extra performance I could get. And additionally, I also was told to try out more powerful graphics cards. And I do plan to do that in the future. But my next couple episodes I've had planned out for a couple weeks, and so I've been putting those on the back burner to do some of these X99 videos. So I do plan on doing them in the not so distant future, uh, but I do have a couple of upcoming videos that I have been working on for a while and have had sitting on the back burner working on these. So if you guys, again, are wanting to see some of those videos, then please hit that subscribe button so you guys are notified when the videos are going live. But I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys all next week. Later, guys.